Hey everyone, Ozzy Viking here for the last Star Wars film until the last Jedi. Episode 7, The Force Awakens. What can I say? It's unimaginative, uninspired, nostalgic filled mess. It's literally the perfect thing for OG purists to watch. Because it's terrible. It's everything they had as a child and nothing new. Because they love just the originals. Even though they could sit back and watch the originals. What do we get? We get this. Now, I'm going to try not to rant yet. I've got a rant I've done. I've already done the rant side of things. Um, it was like 20 minutes long. But yeah. Let's talk about what works. And what sort of things that don't make much sense. And then I'll go into delayed scenes. And then I'll go on a big rant, massive rant. Now, Force Awakens. It feels like it has no imagination. At all. Everything looks the same. The First Order is just the Empire. And everything's the same. There's some new, there's some new ships, but the main ships are TIE Fighters. And they've got Star Destroyers. And the only difference is we'll make them Chrome. And the Resistance. They've got X-Wings and Y-Wings and all that. And the only difference is we'll paint them different colours. Where's the imagination? I think the best way to describe The Force Awakens is a big-budgeted fan-fiction film. No, no, a big-budgeted fan film. That's what it is. No fan fiction because it's all canon now. It's all canon. It's just a big budgeted fan film. It's, it, it, I got bored of this film. I've seen it probably four or five times. Twice in the cinema. Um, two times when I got home. Hell, I think this might have been the second time I've seen it. Or on DVD. Maybe the third time. I've lost count many times. And it's just, every time I watch it, there's some good parts. There are parts in this that do feel like Star Wars. But then there are parts that just make you feel like a big budget fan film. And it's boring. It's stupid. Um, everything's the same. Everything's the same. From uh, all the technology from the original trilogy, basically. That's in this. The only difference is, again, chrome and different colours. What, what? Where's the new ships? Oh, we've got some new ships. But, okay, they're transport ships. What about fighter ships? Fighter classes and destroyers and stuff. Where's the difference? Why is everything so far just big and better? With the new order. Why Why not have something new and interesting? You've got a time span of 30 to 35 years. The same time span for episode 1 to New Hope. There was a big difference there. you think after the Empire was defeated, they'd be like, Hey, let's go crazy. We can actually have colour and happiness back in the galaxy. You know, no resumes needed. But no, what do we get? Crap. We get unimaginative, uninspired crap. It blows my mind. Now... My view on this has sort of changed. So after being able to play Star Wars Battlefront 2, we actually get a better look at them. Some designs I like. I like some of their starter stories. While they look very similar, they do have that sort of different aesthetics to them that they, actually I like. But things like Starfighters and stuff, I'm like, why? what is this lazy shit? Why can't we have new made, newly made ones? Why does everything have to be a rehash of the original trilogy? What's the point? Why? This isn't Star Wars. That's not Star Wars. Star Wars is about telling a journey, a story, through things like Jedi, Sith, the Force, and its characters. Not this shit about always having to have X-Wings and Y-Wings and fucking TIE Fighters and Star Destroyers. That, that, that's not... That's, that's elements of its time, not for the whole entire story. You know? Obviously, you have ships that are similar, but you don't have them exactly the same. And that's what it feels like. It feels like exactly the same. Another thing is the non-memorable music. It's 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 not memorable at all. I can't remember any single music off by heart. The only one I can really think of is when Han dies and that music that plays. That's cool. But only the only thing I can remember is the That's it. That's the only thing I remember. The the music is lacking and for a Star Wars film that's disgustingly terrible. <sighs> but yes, those are things that some bad things, trust me, the rant gets worse. So what works? The practical effects. I liked the practical effects more so. There are moments where it feels like a very good fantasy sci-fi film, and even a Star Wars film. I like the practical effects. While, yes, things like the prequels had practical effects already, this one seems to have made it a fourth point, a fourth, uh, made it basically become the forefront of the film. We have practical effects. Look how awesome we have our practical effects. Fair enough. Um, I like Finn. I like Poe. Ray is the weakest. Um, but yeah, so what's the story and what is the acting and stuff like that? So story-wise, uh, a droid has these this map to 
Anna, uh, Luke Skywalker, um, and then, you know, things happen, it gets lost on Tatooine, I mean, I mean, sorry, Jakku, where it finds, uh, Luke's daughter, I mean, no, where it finds a reincarnation of Luke, no, no, I'm sorry, where it finds, uh, Rey, a scavenger, who has no idea who her family is, and survives on her own, uh, things happen, she f finds the droid, she gets into shit with the stormtroopers and the Empire, I, I mean, First Order and Storm troopers and yeah shit happens you know things happen she finds Han Solo who helps her out there's a Death Star they go her you know she gets captured uh she gets rescued by Han Solo and stuff like that people die and it's just it's basically episode four with some slight variations it's basically what you would expect from a remake of episode four but you'd expect a remake in about 100 years not not 2015 like oh my god this film so there's that okay story yeah the best part about the story is it ends not because it ends as in oh it, it, it ends the film's and I can get out of here but because it ends with Luke it ends with again Luke and the ability to further on a story that could be getting interesting you've got Luke you've got his old lightsaber you've got the possibility, well, now we know, with the, the trailers and stuff, an apprentice, a Padawan, that he can now train. That's interesting as shit. It's interesting that the, you know, the First Order has lost their big guns, and uh, Kyle's got to accept that, and stuff like that, Snoke and all that. So, overall, the ending is the best part, because it really opens up the universe about what can come next. And that excites me. I am excited for The Last Jedi. But this film is a snooze fest. It's disgustingly snoozy. <sighs> Now, there are some other bits that I liked. I liked the First Order to an extent. I liked how they took Stormtroopers and Clone Troopers, whacked them together and said, yeah, that's what we got. But again, watching this film, especially after watching the first six, there's no more imagination. You expect for something like this, especially with the time frame, to be a big batch of imagination. You don't get it here. You get, <laughs> you get a healthy amount of new aliens, but you don't get any old ones, or at least none that you can really recognise. Which makes it feel like a fan film. If they mixed in their new aliens with the old, it would have felt more alive. I think the universe would have felt more alive. Plus the fact, you know, it would have been awesome to see the old stuff. Instead of the new stuff. It's just... Mm. I'm trying to hold my anger in as I think about this film because I got bored. Like, I was watching this film. I've literally just finished watching it. And I'm like, I want to watch the older films. I wanna watch, I've just watched the older films, but I want to watch them again because that is... It, at the end of it, I was just like, thank God it finished. And I can't believe I feel like, I can't believe I feel that with a Star Wars film. But there it is. It's, it, it actually, it's quite terrifying, truthfully, because I, I hate that feeling. I love Star Wars. But this, this Star Wars film is starting to break Star Wars for me. You know? I hope The Last Jedi is better. I'm definitely going to see The Last Jedi in the next one. But if The Last Jedi doesn't do it for me, I might be done with Disney Star Wars. Well, I say that probably won't be, but like, I'm, or at least I won't feel 100% with it, you know? So, there's all that. Uh, acting wise, let's look at acting. Um, I know this is all over the place, but so much anger here. Um, acting wise, it's interesting. The acting in this is hit or miss. Uh, basically, the old actors are fantastic. Basically, everything that comes with the old is fantastic. The Millennium Falcon, Han, Leia, uh, Remembrance of the Past, Vader, and stuff like that, all fantastic. And they act really well. The newer ones, I think out of the newer ones, Finn and Poe are the best. Daisy Ridley, Grey was the worst. Now, this was her first film, Daisy Ridley's first film. And I give her credit that she did pretty well to an extent. Um, but most of the time, she's got flat dialogue, iffy lines. And <laughs> when you watch this film, look in the... When it's not focused on her, look in the background and you'll see her do like facial, um, facial reactions like... Like you, you'll see her do weird facial reactions, which, again, first film, I can give credit to that, but, yeah, that's, acting-wise, it's a bit hit or miss. Um, yeah. Now let's get on to the deleted scenes, and then you guys are going to see a massive, massive rant. But like I said, I'm pretty sure I said it in this part. It's It's been a long day. If you like The Force Awakens and think it's a fantastic film and the best Star Wars film, so be it. I absolutely disagree 100%, and I will rant and rant as to why I think it's your opinion's wrong. 
but I'm going to listen to your opinion first and feel what you're feeling. I'm going to understand what you understand, okay? If you love this film, I will try to understand the best I can before I, you know, hopefully get you to understand why I hate this film and why I feel like it's the worst Star Wars film ever. Because it is. I feel like this is an objectively worst Star Wars film. Of course, again, opinions and stuff like that, but still, it's that bad. And it, it hurts me, not hurts me, but it pisses me off that so many people consider this one of the best. It's nowhere near. Nowhere near. Empire Strikes Back is one of the best. Revenge of the Sith is one of the best. Force Awakens is not. Best way to describe The Force Awakens, along with the other ones that I've described it with, is... The Phantom Menace had more imagination in, its, in the first 10 minutes of that film than The Force Awakens has in the entire 2 hours and 20 minute runtime. Think of that for a sec. Yeah. Now, let's move on to deleted scenes. Alright, deleted scenes. Funny enough, deleted scenes in this actually do make the film better. I would say almost on par with Attack of the Clones in terms of certain deleted scenes. So, there's a list of them. First up, uh, Plot getting his arm ripped off. Alright, he was a dickhead in this film. I really hated that character. And there's a scene, cutscene, where Wala Takadana, uh, Ray bumps into him. And then Chewbacca basically rips his arm off. Now, as much as I like this scene, I can understand why it was taken out. Because you're telling me and the audience that Uncor Plot, or whatever the fuck his name is. Um, while on Jakku. And there's the First Order there, basically con condemning everything. He somehow got through the First Order, away from Jakku, without a ship. We might have had backup ships, which is possible, but still. Went to Takadana for some reason, and bumped into him. Even for Star Wars, that's a bit full on. And I can understand why they took it out. Although, to be able to see his arm get ripped off, oh, I love that. Doesn't add too much, but and I can understand why they took it out, because it's kind of a dumb scene. But yeah, it's just it is, it is nice to see him get his arm ripped off, because he sucks. Finn in the Villager. This is really good. This actually adds more depth as to why he uh, went against the First Order. It's still fucking stupid how he goes against the First Order on his first ever goddamn, you know, just first time out on the field. Just, I'm going to defect because fuck me. Like, really? They could have added a line in where he's like, oh, he's been on the front lines for quite a while now. I guess, and then Kylo Ren could have said something like, I guess your training isn't as complete as you wish it was, or something something like that, you know, says that the first, it would show that the first order isn't as capable as they think they are, and it would make more sense to why he defects, instead of being like, I don't like the first order, even though I was trained from birth, yada yada yada. So this scene adds a lot, because it's a woman with a baby, and he just says no, and gets her, lets her go away. I like that, it's actually a good scene. It actually shows he's got a heart. Again, while he has do does all that, especially in his first fucking time, is stupid as shit. And I'm sure everybody understands that and agrees. Another good one is Kylo on the Falcon when they're on the Starkiller base. Yeah, I like the scene. I really do. It really adds a lot of depth to his character, funny enough, by just having him on the, the Falcon. The way he just looks at it and he feels around it, you can tell that he was here as a child and this is a very big thing for him. It works. Fantastic. Don't know why it was taken out. Really good scene. Fucking stupid that it was taken out. Uh, the speed of chase was kind of cool because it's got Ray being Ray, being all perfect, and then all of a sudden uh, Finn's like, you yeah, know, I'll change, change it up, and Finn kind of wins in this situation, and it's kind of like, see, that kind of shows that she's not perfect at everything because she had to drive or some shit like that, but I can understand why they took it out. And uh, Jakku's message, which was basically uh, uh, Leia getting a message about Jakku and being like, oh, well, we haven't got everything, and then there's a scene where the, the, the squadron before... Um, Starkiller base, they attack Starkiller base, you just see them get up, lift up from uh, Dakar, I think is the place the rebel base is on, and they get up and go attack Starkiller base. Not bad, not bad. I, those things probably could have brought, been brought back in. They're not nothing too big, but they do add a bit. But they won't, so, yeah. So now that we've talked about some positives and deleted scenes and negatives, uh, <laughs> whew, let's talk about the negatives. All the fucking negatives. The whole fucking film is a negative for me. There are some parts that are good, and then there's the rest of the dog shit. Alright, so let's get this straight. Remember Return of the Jedi? At the end of Return of the Jedi, it's like, yeah, we're gonna have Jedi in this. Nah, that's all gone. We killed them all, and all you have left is some Sith, Sith wannabe. While awesome and powerful, he... he He's, we don't know why. He, he just wants to be like Vader. That's that's the depth he gets in here. 
He gets stronger, yes, when he kills Han, his father, and I did think that was a very powerful moment, very well done in sort of metaphors, and even acting-wise, more or less, it can be a bit flat. Adam Driver was a bit flat at the start, but, uh, but you know, acting nowadays, like, acting in Star Wars films is going to be hit or miss most of the time, for every single Star Wars film. If you don't believe that, that's your prerogative, but honestly, that's true. But yeah, Kylo Ren, kind of cool. One of the main characters. I like that. And then we go to Rey. Now, I am all for a female main character. I am all for that. Absolutely. Positively all for that. Because we had great ones like Bastila, Mara Jade, even Jaina was pretty badass. And a few other kids who I can't remember their names right now. There's, there's a lot of kids in the old extended universe. And uh, yeah, I'm all fine for that. But she was too perfect. Way too perfect. For no reason. Uh, what's the best perfect bit she could do? Um... Now, certain aspects make sense. She's a scavenger. She can put stuff to, together. That's awesome. But somehow she can fly a ship, the Millennium Falcon, even though she says she doesn't want to leave. And it's like, then if you don't want to leave, well, how do you know how to fly a ship? Oh, she learned it in games. Then why didn't you show this? Why didn't you show her playing the VR headset or whatever they have in the Star Wars universe and learning how to be a pilot? Why did you automatically just be like, oh, they'll piece it together? No, you gave us a, a helmet, her putting on a helmet, and that was it. What the fuck's that supposed to do? She wants to be a pilot? Cool. But why don't you show us be a pilot? That would make a lot more sense. And all of a sudden, she's able to fix the Millennium Falcon more so than Han does. Han had that shit for like 30 plus years and you can fucking do it in five seconds? Get the fuck out of here with that bullshit. She's too perfect and she's a fucking Mary Sue. She might not hit all the spots of a Mary Sue, but she's up there. She's absolutely up there as a goddamn Mary Sue. And she sucks because of that. She's not an interesting character at all. The only interesting moment was when she's on the planet looking at the old lady trying to scrub that. That was interesting. And then they kind of throw out the window by saying, I'm going to stay at Jakku. And on that, after everything that goes on, she doesn't want to go back to Jakku. Throughout the whole film, even up to Starkiller Base, she's kind of saying, I want to go back to Jakku. What does she do? What does she, what does she do? <sighs> she goes and fires Luke. Oh, i got the Force. I mean, I could go back to Jakku. But I'll go find Luke, who doesn't really make much sense. If you're going to have anybody to go find Luke, why not just send Leia there? I'm pretty sure Leia would want to go see her brother and say, Hey, guess what? My husband died because of our son. I'm so sorry for that. And it's not your fault. Like, you, really? Really? And if everyone who could have gone there, you send Rey? I can understand because she's got the lightsaber and stuff, but why not send her sister there too? What? Why? I mean, BB-8... Wait, was it BB-8 or was it R2-D2? No, I think it was R2-D2 that went with them. R2-D2 makes sense. Tree makes sense. But Rey? You could... Why? Why? What the fuck? And then there's the bit, oh, and the big fucker upper that really pisses me off. Look, there is an SJW undertone in this film, okay? It may not be as prominent as some people are saying. I don't think it's that prominent, but it's there. Main case in point, the Kylo and Rey fight. Worst Star Wars fight ever. And I'm, I'm annoyed that people actually say it's one of the best. It's not. She closes her eyes for 20 fucking seconds or some shit like that, and he doesn't do anything. He doesn't try to, like, push her away or slice her down. No, no, no. 20 seconds closing your eyes, feeling the Force, and you can beat someone who's 30 years old who learned the dark side of the Force. Because that's logic, right? Oh, oh, oh. Oh, I can beat Kylo Ren now, even though he was trained by Luke Skywalker. You're saying that Luke Skywalker's a shit, terrible, uh, master? Because he got his ass because... The Padawan got his ass kicked by Rey, who never used a lightsaber before. She could fight, sure, but the lightsaber is completely different. And hell, she didn't even want it at first. And now she can all of a sudden just beat the living shit out of Kylo Ren, a 30-year-old dark side user who pain and suffering helps fuel his power. And he had a lot of pain and suffering going on, yet he still lost. Even if he was holding back, he still lost. And he got really fucked up because of it. All because she closed her eyes for 20 fucking seconds and the Force somehow did that. Which we've never seen in Star Wars before. The Force would engulf you and help you. But with no training be able to defeat somebody who's again 30 years old and trained with Luke Skywalker. And now Snoke. What the fuck. Like, my god this film. This fucking film. It could have been so much better. We lost the extended universe for this shit? No. No, that, that was not worth it at all. The original extended universe had children of both sides coming together. Some fell to the dark side, some died from them, but it was a really interesting story. More or less. All we get here is just jack shit. We get a remake of episode 4. We get a Mary Sue main female who's boring as dog shit. 
don't get me wrong, Daisy Ridley did a fantastic job with her. She had that, Daisy Ridley brought out that charisma. But the character was so boring, that charisma kind of got annoying after a while. You literally almost got killed. Why are you so happy? There was almost nothing there. Nothing. And don't get me started on the Force abilities. Oh, oh, I've never used the Force before, but I can now make this Stormtrooper just undo my shit and let me go. I can force back Kylo Ren's uh, Force thing. That's fine. I haven't learned the Force or anything, and that's not usually how the Force works. But hey, let's go. You know what really sucks? It really pisses me off the most when people say this is better than the prequels. No. No, 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 no. No. Force Awakens is an unimaginative, uninspired shit fest. Okay? Still has some good stuff in it, sure. But it's the worst Star Wars film, and you're saying it's better than the prequels? I think this is one of the main things that really pisses me off about this film, is people still say it's better than the prequels. It's not. The prequels did their own thing, but they did it very, very well. Bar taking some deleted scenes out, which I hope they put back in. But other than that, they were very solid films. The reason this film gets so much praise because of that nostalgia, which I'm all for. Having a film that's very nostalgic, you should do, but not like this. Look at Attack of the Clones. The nostalgia in Attack of the Clones was, I think, pitch perfect. Uh, the the scene where an, a Skywalker and Obi Wan Kenobi are in a uh, are in a um, a cantina, and you know Obi Wan gets his lightsaber and gets something off. That worked fine because it was in its own way, its own setting, in its own story. Or when Obi-Wan does the meteorite thing with the ship, with Jango Fett and Boba. Perfect again. Perfect throwback. Made sense. Going back to, um, to you know, most Eisley and stuff, made sense because of Luke Skywalker and stuff. And Anakin Skywalker, I mean. That all made sense. Every little tidbit of going back to the originals made sense in the prequels because it did it in its own way. It didn't feel forced or anything like that. It just it was like, oh, that's a nice little throwback. Here, you can tell from get-go. Jakku. Oh, you mean Tatooine? No, it's called Jakku. What's the difference? Nothing. It's a, it's a fa sand fucking planet. Okay. We have a scavenger. She's female this time. Uh, okay. We have a Death Star. Okay. We have a Resistance. Uh, it made no sense. So you're telling me, again, from Return of the Jedi, there's no Jedi. The Empire being defeated basically is null and void because somehow it rose back up to the First Order, even though you'd think after the Empire fell, first of all, the Republic would have tried their best to make sure nothing ever like that happened again. And they can build a Death Star, even though they shouldn't have that technology, all of that, the money or the resources, at least from what we saw in the film. Where does that come from? Oh, that's in the extended universe, you know? The Force Awakens extended universe, you know, that's where we get our fucking information from. How is how is the First Order able to get all this money and resources? Oh, families that were with the Empire gave them money and helped them out with those resources. That's a good bit of information. Why the fuck wasn't it in the fucking film? It wasn't in the film at all. They didn't even mention it. They could have mentioned it. You know, when they're with the, with the rebels and or whatever the fuck they're called. And it's like, oh, it's another Death Star. Oh, no, much bigger than a Death Star. You could have just had someone go, hang on, how the fuck did they make another Death Star? And then General Leia could be like, well, we believe that a lot of families, rich families that were with the Empire, have decided to move with the First Order. That's it. One, two sentences, and you've literally made that plot hole go away. Now you have to read fucking uh, fan fiction or what, you know, fucking extended universe shit to get to understand that stuff. Why? Why? Okay, okay. Yeah, no, 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 that's fine, Disney. You're fucking awesome. Bullshit you are. Oh, and let's move on to some other things. Uh, let, let, let's look at the characters. Okay, we looked at Rey. Makes no sense how she's perfect and stuff. Uh, it does make sense in certain areas that she can do this and that, but it doesn't, they don't, this is the one thing that I don't think uh, JJ understood about uh, Lucas, where he would put ideas in the environment, he would put uh, via dialogue, environmental stuff, he would have these pieces in places that would you could look back up to and go, oh, that's why they're good at this. That's why they're good at that. Like Anakin being able to be a good pod racer. He worked at a place that had its own pod racing. He learned from there. He learned how to create robots and stuff because that was his job. That made sense. And that was in the background, more or less. And then you've got Luke learning how to uh, be a pilot as well. He literally says in episode four that he learned to be a pilot. You know, he was trained to be a pilot. He wanted to go to the academy and get better. Again, in dialogue, in his own universe. It made sense. But no, here, she's a perfect everything because 
SJW bullshit. And it was. A lot of people think that. And she could have been so much better because Daisy Ridley did play her well. She brought... I think Daisy Ridley brought a lot of oomph to that character. But the character was dog shit boring. Only a few... Only... And every single now and then, that would come out and you'd see some goodness there. You'd be like, oh, she's actually quite... Oh, no, she's not anymore. Let's go on to Finn. <laughs> well, I've mentioned it in the deleted scene area, but Finn? Finn... Finn makes no sense. So he's taken from his... As a kid from the First Order. And... Uh, He's trained from the First Order as a kid, and on his first ever outing, he stops being a stormtrooper. Let's rewind that for a sec. His first ever outing on the job, being controlled as a child to now, he defects from the First Order on his first fucking mission. Really? Again, you could have added just one sequence of dialogue that made this a lot better. You could have added, we've had him on the front lines a bit too often. Maybe he's got, you know, some sort of PTSD thing. That would have been made him a lot more better and more to better, a lot more awesome than, oh, well, I had to slaughter a whole lot of people and uh, stuff like that. And it's, it's, it's worse than, it's, it's the worst crossover change I think I've ever seen in a film. Oh, we had to kill these people. No, I don't like that. I'm going to go against my word, even though it's my first... Just... And I like Finn. I like Finn as a character, but that was the dumbest shit I've ever seen. I was actually pretty excited for Finn. Because, yes, at the time, although I did think rather quickly that Disney wasn't going to do this, I thought he was going to be the main character, the new Jedi, which was very much like Kyle Katarn, because he was a stormtrooper then turned into a Jedi. I was like, hey, he could be the new Kyle Katarn character. And I'm fine with who he is. I'm fine with also, uh, his authenticity, not authenticity, um... I'm fine with who he is in you know in terms of color and as, as a person. That's fine. I like the whole fact that he could be a stormtrooper turning into a Jedi or a uh, Force user. That's cool as well. What do we get? Stormtrooper that didn't like his first ever job, so he quits. And then we got a female who's perfect in every single way. But why? Why is she perfect? No reason. No, the Force makes her do awesome shit. And the Force Awakening, what, what is this with the Force Awakening? The Force was already there in Episode 7. We didn't really get much, even in, like, Extended Universe, we haven't seen anything here that's made us go, why, why is the Force just suddenly awakened? It's not even spelled out, and it's bullshit. Uh, Poe, Poe's fine. I, I enjoy Poe. I think he was a good character, he's well acted, he's energetic, and I'm happy that they didn't kill him off. I'm very happy they didn't kill him off, but yeah. Uh, what else? The Starkiller Base. Uh, so, another Death Star. Like, Starkiller Base is kind of cool in terms of it being frosty and stuff, although very much like Hoth, but still, it was kind of cool. And then, it's another Death Star that can shoot multiple beams. Why? What's the point? Why have we got a third Death Star? How did they build it? Why did they build it? What's the point? Why didn't the, uh, the Republic... Sorry about that, my GoPro was probably getting too heated because of the fact that I'm raging. Let's continue. So, why didn't the Republic kind of make something to stop this sort of thing from happening? Oh, we don't know! It's just the remake of episode 4, we don't need to explain shit! Well, okay, well that's fine, no, 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 don't, don't explain shit, you know. Make a clusterfuck that every single fucking OT purist will love because that's all they love. Nostalgia! Ugh. So... Yeah, that all happened. We got another Death Star. What else? Uh, Snoke, somewhat interesting, but he's CGI. We can't, we can't like him. He's too CGI. He's like Jar Jar, way too CGI. Too much CGI. No, 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 no. We can't have that. We need practical effects. Good practical effects in this film, but no, 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 no bad CGI. No crazy CGI characters. Well, guess what he is. Uh -huh. Snoke seems interesting. Have to wait until Last Jedi to see what comes next. Uh, Kylo Ren. I like Kylo Ren. He's very much like Jason Solo from the Extended Universe. He basically is. I like that. I like Jason. Um, Kylo Ren's pretty cool. He's a bit angsty, bit bit um, angry and all that. But I mean, yeah. Although to be truthful, it is a bit weird. Like everyone says, Anakin was too whiny. He was. Tw he was like nineteen to twenty three by the end of it all. That made sense. Kylo's thirty and still kind of whiny. I don't know. Age wise, it's a bit. It's a bit harder to accept Kylo to an extent. Then again, 
there are people that in there are sixties and plus years old that are as whiny as shit. So yeah, still adds. Uh, what else? Han and Leia were great. Leia, Han dying, I kind of saw, but it, they did it. Disney did it way too stupidly. First of all, they should have brought back Luke and Leia together with Han. They sh they should have done that. Now we can't get that unless you do CGI options, which is possible. But now we can't really get that. We can't get Han, Luke, and Leia together on screen. Which is fucking bullshit. You know what you know what would have made that scene a lot stronger? You could still have you could still have Finn and po um Finn and uh, Leia um fucking hell. Finn and Ray up there. But what you could have done is had Luke and Leia there. Imagine it. They see it happening, he's walking on there to see Kylo, Luke's looking down at him and saying, You can do it, Han. You know, he's saying to himself, You can do it, Han, do what I couldn't do. Han dies, Luke starts to succumb to the dark side like his father. And then he goes and fights Ray. Um, Ray. He go. He goes into the forest and uses his father's lightsaber to fight Kylo Ren. And he's about to kick his ass. You know, he slashes him across the face, and he's about to win. And you see anger. You see Luke just filled up with anger and rage, just about to strike him down like his father would have. Um, but then, from behind him, you hear Luke. Don't. You turn around. It's Leia, up on the hill, being the light. Because she knows. She knows that if Luke does this, she's lost her brother, her son, and her husband. She's lost three big things in her life. So she calms him down. She stops it. He's like, what, what, what have I become? What, what was I about to do? You know, and you could have a scene before of him slaughtering stormtroopers, which would have been great. And then that, then he goes off to Arcto. See, that would have been awesomer because not only would it have been a lot different in a way than, a force, uh, than uh, episode four, but it would have added more to Luke because Luke's only in it in the end and that was fucking bullshit. You know, that's absolute bullshit. And you could have made it so... This film could have been so much better if you had Luke in there to play with them as well. He could be like, oh, another Force user. You know, but he's he could be hesitant in the trainer. And then things happen, things this happen. And you know what's great? The Last Jedi could still be The Last Jedi. It could still be exactly the same story as Last Jedi, just with certain differences. But no, what what did we have to get? We had to get a nostalgic filled, unimaginative, uninspired shit fest. With Force Awakens. It's the worst Star Wars film. And it's actually one of the Star Wars films. That I have to give two ratings for. When I first saw it. I actually enjoyed it. I thought it was a great film. And it was a very nostalgic film. I gave it a 7. I saw it a few other times. It went down to a 6. This is a 6 out of 10 film for me. It's terrible. It's. It's. What gets me the most. Is when fans love this. They just. Shock of block. Just love this film. And I don't understand it. You're saying, beforehand, I was saying how they think it's better than the prequels. Okay, first of all, I don't. I, I objectively object to that bullshit, okay? The prequels were their own thing and they did it well. This is just an unimaginative, uninspired remake. But you know what's really bad? When people do say this is better. This has got a better score than, say, Revenge of the Sith on both IMDb and Rotten Tomatoes. Which I know, fuck those sites, because people, and there's also that prequel rage that even OT purists have that are, that's absolute BS, but still... But what, what fans are saying with all the happiness that they get from this film is you're basically saying that the only good Star Wars film is a remake, unoriginal, uninspired, unimaginative film. That is not how Star Wars should be and that's not how filmmaking should be. If you're going to do any sort of like uh, throwback and nostalgia, do it. That's great. But don't make your whole entire fucking film based on one and have stupid areas that go against the force itself. Don't get me wrong. I'm sure that this will get explained in episodes uh, uh, 8 and 9. I'm sure it will be. And from what I think is going to happen is I think episode 9 will be fantastic. No, episode 8. Episode 8. This is not episode, episode, episode 8. I think The Last Jedi, which as I make this is like three days away, um, is going to be amazing. I think it will be up there with Revenge of the Sith and Empire as the best Star Wars films. But this... Every time I watch this, I'm going to think of this as the worst Star Wars film. Even if um, 8 and 9 make characters like Ray better and such, which I'm I'm perfectly sure they will, it still doesn't stop the fact that when I watch this film, Ray's a Mary Sue, uh, Finn just goes against his, his lifestyle way too quickly, and this the whole entire episode is a remake, and it could have been done a lot better. But no, nostalgia, best Star Wars film ever because of nostalgia. Get the fuck out of here with that bullshit. Fuck nostalgia. You know, if you make your whole entire film based on nostalgia, get the fuck out of this industry. You don't know jack shit. You're just jerking off in the faces of the OT purists that have no idea what the fuck they're talking about because, oh, oh, they, Lucas added a no here. There wasn't a no in the original, therefore it's shit. 
Get the fuck out of here with that bullshit. <laughs> I know this has been a big rant, and I could go on. But I shouldn't. I shouldn't, okay? Now, like I said, first half of this, there was a positive side of things. And there are some positives there. And the negatives, well, we went on with the negatives. Um, I think another big negative was Phasma. She sucked. She was the Boba Fett of this film. She got defeated easily. She destroyed the whole entire Starkiller base and stuff like that. And she's just boring, you know? She looked cool, sounded cool, but she was boring. Absolutely boring. And you know what? Extended universe stuff, books and even comics, she's apparently a badass, a crazy-ass badass. Okay, that's cool. But why does this get free reign of extended universe making it better and things like the prequels don't? The amount of times I've said, oh, but this film's... The, the, you know, these, these sort of things actually make it better if you can't see the goodness in these films. Nah, I don't, I, you, we shouldn't be allowed... Nah, fuck, fuck the extended universe. You, you, they shouldn't be had to help create characters and so on and so forth. Yet, when it comes to this film, no, 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 Phasm's great because of her extended universe stuff. Double-edged sword, much. But yeah. Um, overall, I think that's kind of it. All the positive and negatives I had for this film. It's a disappointment. A film that I kind of don't really care to watch. I can enjoy parts of it. And there are moments where I'm like, this isn't too bad. But then there are moments that I go, why Why was this even a thing? Why? Why? Why did you do this? What, what was the point? <sighs> but yeah. Uh, rant, somewhat over. I probably needed that. But yeah, 6 out of 10. An absolute 6 out of 10. Worst Star Wars film I've ever seen. I, I mean, I would probably want to watch the holiday special more so than this. Or at least the Boba, the Boba Fett bit. The Boba Fett bit in the, in the Star Wars special was actually pretty good, but yeah. Um, that's Aussie Viking out. I will definitely do a video on The Last Jedi when I see it, which I do think is going to be fantastic up there with the best. Um, and yeah. Now, I'd like to put this out again. If you love this film and think it's the best... That's fair enough. I don't want to be someone that says you're an idiot or a fool for liking this film. I might have come off across like that when I got angry, but this film just, just what they did and what they, and just how everybody loved it, even though this was an unimaginative film, I just, it just really pissed me off. Um, but if you love this film and you think it's the best or one of the best Star Wars films, so be it. You know, my opinion, your opinion, tomato, tomato sort of thing. You like what you like. I hate what I hate. Vice versa. So if you love this film, fair enough. And there are some good parts that I think you could come up and say is actually objectively good. I can agree to that. Absolutely. I think the special effects were great. I think some acting in certain areas was great. I did like Kylo Ren, even though he was basically a Vader knockoff still. Um, but there's a lot of negatives that just weren't explained, weren't weren't even tidbits of information left there. You know, there weren't breadcrumbs left for you to piece things together. It was just, like I keep saying, unimaginative and uninspired. But yep, that's Force Awakens. Um... Now I'm excited to play Battlefront and get on to Bam Zing Za Last Shadow. I was invited. Bye.